Hey, we're out here. We finally caught a snake. Can you see it there? We'll take a closer look at it. This is, um, I think they, I think they call it a, a debris snake or a litter snake. I think it's a uh, conifanes, something like that. I'll uh, definitely put the information up there. It's uh, just a little brown snake. It was in these leaves right here. And I just happened to see it. Kind of a nondescript brown snake. Supposed to be rear fanged and non venomous to humans. Hadn't tried to bite me yet, so that's good. That's kind of a handsome little snake. You can see it's got some dots on its belly. I think sometimes it's called like a black dot bellied snake or something. I'll, uh, again, I'll put the name up there. But anyway, kind of cool to see it. I think we've seen one other. They're not easy to catch, but this one was pretty easy because it was on this sleep, uh, steep hill here. But we're going to let him go, or her go. Probably take off. Uh, some nights it's terciopelos, some nights it's cat-eyed snakes, some nights it's blunthead tree snakes, and we are like within three minutes of the last young blunthead tree snake, and we've got another one. Let me uh, work on the camera here. Look at that right there. Looks like a piece of moss or something, or a lichen. But I assure you it's a blunthead tree snake. This is about the smallest one I've ever seen. Look at that. That hook is about a quarter of an inch, so that's about an eighth of an inch. It's pretty amazing, beautiful. Just how delicate is this snake? Look at that. Look how large these dark spots are. Whereas when it becomes an adult, they fade completely out to brown. The snake, of course, is looking for lizards, mostly young animals. Um, predators could be scorpions, larger snakes, such as coral snakes, if it ever fell on the ground. Coral snakes love to eat snakes this size. Spiders would even eat this. Maybe even a larger frog, one of the smoky jungle frogs. Super, super delicate. I once described a uh, blunthead tree snake in the woods at night as a oily piece of spaghetti. And uh, this is exactly what they look like. I don't know if you can see the gloss on it. But it does. It looks exactly like an oily piece of spaghetti up in the trees. I'm kind of maxed out on my selfie stick. So I'm not going to be able to get much closer. But I'm sure that's what it is. I'm positive that's what it is. Uh, it's the description of an oily piece of spaghetti up in the trees. It's about 10 feet up and my selfie stick is only about 42 inches. Yeah, I don't think I can get much more of it. Let's get one more try here. There. I'm shooting that completely blind. I can't see anything on the screen. Here's something we don't see often. The blunt head tree snake in the trail.
move it off the trail a little bit. Well, going back to the trail. Anyway, we'll leave it be. It looks like it wants to hide. Like I said, something we don't always see. They're usually in trees. Uh, this may be the second one I found on the ground. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, I don't know if you can see what's behind me, but it's a blunthead tree snake. This is a, uh, it's not an adult, but it's not a very small one either. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's tough to keep my footing here. Oh, come on. Let's see if I can. They're pretty, they're pretty cool. Oh. Well, there we go. There's his head. You know, he disappear around the corner. There it goes. Good luck tonight catching lizards. So um, I was just looking on this tree here for our salamanders. And I just happened to look over here. See a blunt head tree snake. I can't get over there to him because it's over this over this drop off here. See there. But definitely a blunt head tree snake. Just hanging out. <laughs> well, it's raining, as you can tell. Normally it's not that big of a problem in the jungle, but because I wear these glasses, they get fogged up and they get rain on them. Uh, and you just can't see anything very well. We've been kind of looking for cat-eyed snakes. I haven't seen very many, but we've got one. Cat-eyed snakes uh, probably looking for frogs. There are a lot of little frogs that are out here. Also, maybe even sleeping lizards. It's generally one of the more common snakes. I don't know where they've been, but this is uh, just the second one we've seen this trip. That one's really beautiful. Look at those eyes. Of course, if you're coming down the trail, this is what you would see. Turn my headlight off. That's what it looks like, just laying on a leaf, plain as day. It's amazing we don't find more of them just like this. Hey, well, it's the last night and it's raining, go figure. Uh, and surprisingly enough, we have a terciopelo. We have so many terciopelos on our last day or night here. It's been remarkable. Uh, it's just it's just amazing. I don't know why if it's 
what it is. I think that they want to come out and say, hey, thanks for visiting, but we want our jungle back. So uh, I'll show it to you. It's right over here. It's a full grown terciopelo. Big old monster head on it. Look at that beast. I know it doesn't do it justice. Just to give you an idea of where it is. I came across this log down this trail. So maybe three meters over. They tend to freak out, and I can see it's getting a little nervous by the number of uh, tongue flakes that it has. I don't know if you can see it, but that Tercipelo's eyes glow. It probably lives in this brush pile right here. I mean, in all seriousness, if you came across a snake like this, you'd be screwed. But if you have a little bit of light on it, it tends to uh, show up pretty good. Fortunately, we have flashlights. These are a couple of uh, game cam pictures of the log that we crossed over right where that Terciopelo lived. And you can see uh, a mouse and uh, a squirrel and then even a uh, four-eyed opossum, which they say the big food of uh, Terciopelos. Wonder if those animals are still alive.